The Complete Audio 6, which we'll henceforth call the KA6, is a computer audio interface from Native Instruments for Mac or Windows. It's a robust unit with a stylish design, low latency, and many useful features. You can simply use the built-in audio interface of your computer, but there are many advantages of using an external unit. For example, they typically allow XLR microphone connection, they provide other inputs including MIDI connections, and they can offer decreased latency. That's delay due to digital analog signal conversion. Audio interfaces can also offer hardware monitoring as you record, and they can offer multiple outputs. The KA6 converts analog signals, that's vibrations in the air or ordinary sounds, into digital representations on your computer using 24-bit resolution. This is better than CD quality and means that the unit records changes in amplitude of the incoming sound from a microphone or an instrument using more than 16 million different levels. The interface can also record using sample rates of either 44.1, 48, 88.2 or 96 kilohertz. What this means is it can record that signal amplitude up to 96,000 times per second. The KA6 will always record using 24-bit, but make sure this is taken advantage of in the preferences of your digital audio workstation, or DAW. As for the sample rate, the KA6 will record using 44.1 kHz by default, and this is perfectly sufficient for most purposes. But if you wish to record using a higher sample rate, you set this in software. You can set a default at the driver interface in Windows or Mac, and you can also choose within a given project's audio settings. The other important setting in software for this or any other audio interface is the I.O. buffer size. This is something you set in the preferences of your DAW. When performing digital to analog or analog to digital conversion, the audio driver needs to store small amounts of data which are then sent to the CPU for processing. A larger buffer makes it easier for your computer to process this information, but does introduce a greater delay. The art here, then, is to choose the lowest value you can that does not cause your music software to stall with buffer warning messages, or pops and clicks. Try around midway to start with, on a modern computer. We can see here that this means the system will take only 7.9 milliseconds to convert a digital signal into analog that is, zeros and ones, into sound we can hear, while it will take 17 milliseconds to convert incoming audio from analog into digital, and then back again out of the computer from digital into analog, that is, a round-trip conversion. This is very fast indeed, but human hearing can detect delays of greater than around 10 milliseconds, and we'll discuss this more later on. Now let's examine the Complete Audio 6 hardware and understand how to use it. Beginning with the front panel, you can see two inputs on the left here. These, inputs 1 and 2, are not the only inputs on this unit, but they are the primary and by far the most versatile ones. They're both mono inputs and they're combination sockets, they can accept either XLR microphone plugs or quarter-inch TS or phone plugs, such as might come from a guitar. You press the tab here to release XLR plugs, and the quarter-inch sockets are what is known as balanced to help eliminate any interference. The gain dial beside each input determines how much signal is allowed into the unit. It can be good to keep this at about 75%, this button here affects only quarter-inch jack inputs, not XLR connections. Instruments such as guitars provide a weak audio signal, and when this button is pressed down, the KA6 will amplify the signal a little to bring it up to what is known as line level. This is the optimum signal level for audio within the system, and instruments such as synthesizers will already output at this level, so leave the button up for connections such as these. We mentioned inputs 1 and 2 are mono, so of course, in order to have a stereo input, you connect a cable into each. 
the left hand channel to the left and the right hand channel to the right. This section here is for hardware monitoring. In normal circumstances, a signal received into the KA6 will be routed through USB to your computer once this unit is selected as the audio interface. You'll be able to select, for example, inputs 1 and 2, and even monitor the incoming signal on a track in an application like Logic Pro. There, you can even add software effects and listen to the processed signal. The key point here, though, is processed signal. This software monitoring is all well and good, but it takes some time for the interface to convert the incoming analog audio into a digital form and then back again into an analog form for us to hear. While anything less than 10 milliseconds tends to be imperceptible, this delay, or latency, can be as long as 30 milliseconds. This can introduce a distraction, especially if a singer can hear themselves both as they sing and a moment later via software monitoring through speakers or headphones. Hardware, or direct, monitoring routes an audio input directly to an output, bypassing the USB connection so that the sound can be heard through speakers or headphones instantly. It stays in the analog domain. When you see singers with headphones on, they might be listening to the music, but are likely hearing their own voice via hardware monitoring. It's routed straight to the outputs, or possibly via other analog hardware effects, which do not introduce digital delay. To enable hardware monitoring on the KA6, you need to turn it on here. This routes the signal received by inputs 1 and 2 directly through to outputs 1 and 2 on the back of the unit, which we'll discuss later. Note, this incoming signal is still made available to the computer via USB, but is additionally routed straight through to the output. If you hold the monitoring on button down, it'll cycle between routing the input signal to outputs 3 and 4 instead, or routing the incoming signal to outputs 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. We'll come to discussing these outputs later, but in this manner, it's possible to listen to hardware monitored input through headphones and or one set of speakers, while listening to audio from the computer through another. Also in the monitoring section, the volume knob determines the output level of the monitored signal. You can send the input signal through unaffected, or you can lower it, allowing for a different mix level with whatever else might be being sent to the outputs by the computer via USB. Let's say you have only a microphone plugged into the KA6 using input 1, which is the left-hand channel. If you monitor this, you'll only hear it in your left speaker or headphone. It's mono. When this button is pressed down, the KA6 will output that signal into both channels, left and right, which tends to sound preferable. That's the purpose of it. But beware, because if you're using a stereo input, that is, putting plugs into both inputs 1 and 2, and you have this button pressed down, both channels will be combined in the monitoring and you'll lose that stereo effect. These controls here are all to do with the headphones output of the KA6. The socket expects a quarter inch stereo TRS plug. The volume knob setting the output level is completely independent of the main volume knob on the top of the unit, which we'll discuss in a moment. In other words, you can be listening to the outputs loudly through headphones, while quietly through speakers. The maximum volume through the headphone jack, however, is not especially loud, and depending on the impedance of your headphones, you may even wish to boost the signal further via a headphone amp. Certain software, such as DAWs, will allow you to direct audio to any output of your interface. You might select outputs 3 and 4 of the KA6 instead of the primary outputs 1 and 2. In another scenario, you might be routing monitored inputs through to outputs 3 and 4, while computer sound goes to outputs 1 and 2. In this case, you might use this button here to listen to the monitored audio only in your headphones. It decides which outputs the headphones will hear, outputs 1 and 2, or 3 and 4. If not recording, 
In most cases, you'll leave this button up so you hear the main outputs, and you might turn down the output to the speakers, which we'll discuss in a moment. Now let's move around to the back of the KA6 and see what's provided there. Starting on the far left, condenser microphones which are extremely sensitive and have excellent frequency response require a small amount of electrical power. In order to provide this to your microphone, connected through one of the XLR sockets on the front of the unit, press this button in. Below the 48 volt button is the main USB output for you to connect the interface to your computer. This is a USB 2 connection. On the right of this, we have two MIDI sockets. If you're using a controller keyboard which doesn't connect to your computer via USB, you might connect it via MIDI to here instead and select this MIDI input in your DAW. Alternatively, you might send MIDI information from your sequencer to an external synthesizer connected via the MIDI out port here. In that way, you can tell the hardware synth what notes to play and send other messages. The main outputs for the KA6 are these, outputs 1 and 2, which are mono, quarter-inch TS jacks, one for each channel. These are most likely going to be connected directly to active, that means powered, speakers, or to a mix or amplifier unit. These are the primary audio outputs for the KA6, and remember, one of our options was to monitor input straight to here. Should you wish to also output audio from the KA6 to another destination, two more balanced outputs are provided, three and four, here. You might find these useful if working with surround sound, but bear in mind the volume will be loud as there is no moderating control for these on the unit. Earlier on we discussed the fact that you can connect either microphones, guitars or line level instruments such as synthesizers to the front inputs 1 and 2 on the KA6 and there you can choose to boost the signal and you can also set the gain. On the back of the unit here we are provided with two further inputs. These are not XLR but only quarter inch TS inputs and this time they are fixed at line level so they're ideal for the connection of hardware synths, leaving the other inputs free perhaps for microphones at the front. With the driver installed, these inputs will show up as 3 and 4 in DAW software, so you can record from them. But notice these inputs do not support hardware or direct monitoring. If you want to hear the inputs, you need to do so in software. Finally, on the back of the KA6, SP diff connections are also provided. This stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface Format. These can carry a digital as opposed to analog audio signal to and from supporting devices. They're not very widely used, but if you have a device that's compatible, perhaps a DAT player or certain synthesizers, then you can connect using them and avoid unnecessary digital to analog or analog to digital conversion. Now let's review the top of the complete Audio 6. This consists of indicator lights and one central dial. On the left hand side here, specific inputs light green when a signal is detected and they light red when that signal is too loud or clipping. Turn up gain or output on the external device until the lights just fail to turn red. When there's an outgoing signal to either outputs 1 and 2 or 3 and 4, this is indicated with a green light. But note this does not include a signal which has been directed to those outputs for the purpose of monitoring. These lights come on when a signal is received from your computer directed to an output via USB. It doesn't matter whether any cables are actually plugged into the sockets. The SP diff sync light, just here, becomes orange when an external digital clock is established. You choose whether external or internal synchronisation should be used for connections in the software driver settings. The MIDI lights here indicate whether MIDI messages are being sent or received. 
The 48 volt light here indicates whether that power is being supplied, not whether it is necessarily being consumed. And the USB light here indicates the status of the connection with your computer. If it's solid, a connection is properly established. If it's flashing, there's been a problem and you could try unplugging the cable and plugging it in again. Coming down to these lights on the bottom right, we discussed how when you wish to use hardware monitoring, you can choose to route the input signal to either outputs 1 and 2, or 3 and 4, or to both sets of outputs at the same time. These lights indicate accordingly the current active routing. Similarly, we know there's a button on the front for deciding which audio outputs you'd like routed to the headphone socket. If you're listening to music output by your computer, you'll likely have this set to 1 and 2. But if you're monitoring yourself singing while music plays through the main outputs, you might be listening to the input routed to outputs 3 and 4 here. We can't leave the complete audio 6 without mentioning this large dial on the top. As it says here, this controls the volume of primary outputs 1 and 2 on the back of the unit. Most of the time your computer's applications will be selecting these outputs via USB, so you use this to control the volume of music, etc. Remember you will already have separately controlled the volume of any signal you might be monitoring to these outputs. That signal then becomes a constituent part of this overall output, though you can also be listening to and setting the volume of the overall output separately when listening through headphones. That's a guide to how to use the Complete Audio 6. In most cases, you will likely have it set in software to use 24-bit 44.1 kHz conversion, and you will have powered or active, that means internally amplified, speakers connected to outputs 1 and 2 on the back of the unit. You'll use the left-hand XLR socket on the front of the KA6 to record from a condenser microphone, making sure that phantom power is turned on. You might optionally monitor this to outputs 1 and 2 or 3 and 4, also listening through headphones. This audio will be provided via USB to your computer. Meanwhile, you might have a synthesizer connected to inputs 3 and 4 on the back of the KA6, making its sound available for recording via those inputs in your sequencer. Using the MIDI out socket on the back of the KA6, you could send control messages from your computer to that connected synth, telling it what notes to play. This would be a typical home studio setup. We hope you found this guide helpful. Happy recording!